So welcome to this lesson where we're going to take a look at the best practices for developing a front end and also we're going to take a look at the workflow as well. Now the workflow is not setting up the development environment such as you know creating the folder structure, putting in the files and so forth. That's not what we're going to be doing, we're going to do that at a later date. But what I'm going to do right now is go over the principalities of best workflow that way we can be more efficient at developing our front end. So first of all I want to touch up on our best practices and the first one is keeping the business logic away from the front end. If I was to reassemble this statement what I would say is keeping the back end away from the front end. Now obviously you need an alliance between the back end and the front end because they both need to communicate with each other and effectively the front end is useless without the back end and the back end is useless without the front end. The reason being is because typically the old way of programming was to connect to the database and then extract the data and then in PHP or the server side technology I would actually take that data and then I would print it out so I would echo out let's say a load of anchors with the name of the event and so forth and that's not what we want to do we want raw data we just want to work with raw data the reason being is because this makes your application a hell of a lot more flexible the problem is with procedural programming like I've just explained it's not very object oriented and so one little break one little bug can bring down your entire front end that is a calamity for a business, especially one that's running on the cloud. So this is why we have to get out the mind frame of procedural programming and enter into a new age where object oriented programming is better. Not because it's necessarily going to be quicker because in most cases, and again, it depends on what language you're talking about here, but if you're talking about, uh, let's say, PHP in this instance, and we print it out directly from the database, it's going to be quicker than the PHP generating the JSON object, and then we have to pull the JSON object in and then display the content. That's not going to be quicker, and it also requires more code, but I've just said that that's a better way to program. The reason why I've done that is because it's more robust and it's more flexible. There's so many times where a client's changed their mind and they want some extra data in there, they want some data removing and replacing with something else, and guess what? If you're not doing things object-oriented, it's gonna be very difficult, and it's going to lead to bugs, it's gonna to lead to errors, it's gonna to lead to anomalies, for example, things showing up in the database that shouldn't be showing up in there, blank tables, blank records, and all sorts of kind of crazy stuff. So it really is an important and imperative thing that we take a look at adapting our minds so that we can fit into a working environment. And don't forget, most big companies don't want somebody who can do everything in one go. What they want is somebody who is really good at what they do. So if you're good at HTML and CSS, and you just know a tiny bit of PHP, you don't want that procedural programming, you don't want all that PHP being shoved into your face. What you want is clean markup, readable markup, that's easily changeable and stylable, and the back end can adapt flexibly to the front end. That's why we're doing what we're doing, that's why you keep the business logic, or the back end, away from the front end. So the next point I want to touch upon is simpler really is better. Whether it's everyday life or whether it's programming or designing, simpler is always better. And this is why companies are hiring you. Ultimately, they want a simple front end. This is a very, very simple best practice. It means that you need to take them to wherever they're going to go in the shortest amount of time. So for example, you get into a cab and he drives around three different blocks and you end up on the other side of the street. That's something that's not really what we want to do, but I see so many programs do it and a lot of popular e-commerce programs do it. For example, we want to get to the products page or take a look at the categories, which is the most important thing to an e-commerce, yet it's buried away inside of menus and it's very complicated and things are all sort of shifted around everywhere. It's just so confusing to me why this isn't so 
so simple. And this is why companies are hiring you to create a custom front end to get the job done in the shortest amount of time. So they don't have to spend hours and hours and hours trying to teach their staff to use your front end. Make it as simple as possible, but however, don't get it convoluted. We do not want to limit the functionality. With the functionality, you should provide as much functionality as possible. Make sure they have all the features available to them. And yes, of course, there will be more complicated front ends that will need drop down menus and so forth. But try to limit it, try to consolidate certain things together to make the front end as simple as possible. And display data that is essential and abstract away data that does not need to be there. So the next best practice we want to look at is performance. And I know it can seem a bit of a contradiction since earlier I said that your program design should effectively be object oriented. And inherently object orientation is slower than procedural. And also that's not the case for let's say JavaScript. JavaScript is much quicker when you start using prototype and so forth. But however, when it comes to PHP and server side technology, when you start going into object orientation, it generally tends to be slower. It takes more steps in order to get that data from the database and then display it to the user when using object orientation instead of using the procedural traditional way of programming. So again, this may seem a little bit convoluted, but don't be. It basically means that because you're inherently slower, you're already going to be slower off the start line. What you need to do is be more performance focused than ever because you need to squeeze out every last bit of performance. So you gain back that inherent slowness of object orientation. Now, don't get me wrong, scripts execute in milliseconds. So, you know, it's very, very rare that you're going to see an extremely slow interface. But however, let's just focus on performance and squeeze every last little bit out of it because that will give you that extra edge. And that's the most important thing. Now let's move on to workflow. So with the workflow, what we need to do is take a look at dividing everything up. So what do I mean by dividing everything up? I simply mean that each page has its own directory and it has its own style sheet. Now that may seem like a very long winded way to develop something, but in actual fact, it's not. When you have to style something, you want to concentrate on that one specific thing. Well, you can't do that if you're trudging through a load of CSS that has nothing to do with what you're currently doing. So this is why it is so important that you think about the workflow and with this workflow, it can save you hours, maybe weeks, maybe months. And again, it depends on the size of the project. But however, generally, when you are not being distracted by all the other code and just looking at the specific bit of code that you want, what you will find is you can work quicker and get the job done a lot better. And on top of that, you can stitch it all together at a later date anyway. So that's not a big deal. The next thing I want to talk about is SAS. Now you can use the import with SAS a lot like you can use the import with CSS. So that means with the SAS file, when we use import, it will import any generic styling that you've got. So for example, styling the body element, adding in the font and so forth. But then also what you have is the ability to transport and use the mixins and also the color values as well. So I can have one SAS file that contains the entire color scheme and contains all the mixins that I need and all the default styling that I need and it can be shared with all the other SAS files. And that way it's going to save me a load of time. So thank you for watching this lesson and I hope you can join me in the next lesson where we'll take a look at the design of the front end.